What's up guys, welcome back to Lesser Athletes, I'm Shadow, and today like always is an interesting video, it seems like on this channel, it is the number 7 pick trade ideas. There's been rumors about the Indiana Pacers who first uh, wanted to trade up, then now they're talking about maybe we trade our pick for a star wing, which makes me feel like they're not confident in who to pick, uh, like Taylor Hendricks, Jairus Walker, or Kent Whitmore. Uh, all players that they were kind of uh, looking at to potentially um, pick and that worked out with them. Um, it is going to be very interesting to see if they are going to keep and stick and pick, if they're going to try and trade for a wing. In this video, there's going to be two players that I don't think is a star wing like they wanted. Um, very much could potentially be a star wing. Uh, two players that are star wings that... Um, um, I think it's the most likely to happen and then the last one is probably uh, not gonna happen at all But Hanad from lesser athlete said I think he sh uh, you should include it because it would probably be the best fit for the Pacers. So um, Let's get started trade number one is a Spurs trade Keldon Johnson Doug McDermott in a top 10 2024 pick for the seventh pick in the draft Doug McDermott is someone that um, I definitely think uh, could be on the move, especially maybe with the Pacers they would really like, and they might be hard to like really nudge into the right way. Honestly, Doug McDermott maybe not even in this trade, whatever it might be. Keldon Johnson, though, I think has potential to be a good star wing in this uh, NBA with his slashing ability, his scoring ability. Um, but he's not that star you would hope right now. He did score about 20 points per game uh, last uh um, year, but he's not the star that you want to be. I think he would fit perfectly with the Pacers with how he is more of a scoring wing, which Hal Burn would probably help in Elve's game. And the first round pick is some capital that you can keep. Um, does the Spurs uh, become top 10 next year? Uh, top 10 worst teams, top 10 pick next year. We'll have to see what Victor. But there are rumors inside the Spurs organization that they are wanting to trade up. They are wanting to get a point guard for the future with Victor Webb and Yama. And at number seven, I think is the perfect spot to be because who's the teams after you? Wizards and Jazz, who are going to be teams to be looking at for point guard position. They're teams that most the that most need point guard position. Maybe. Um, Wiz or uh, Magic take a point guard at six. I'd be shocked, other than maybe taking a wing. Um, but there are teams that could trade up, and you could potentially snag Anthony Black, Casein Wallace, someone perfect that could fit. I think Anthony Black size uh, situation would be probably the most perfect fit for the Spurs. Someone that could per is one of the best passers in here. Doesn't really need to shoot the ball. He's one of the best pick and roll players uh, when it comes to passes. Think of that with Victor Webb and Yama would be very, very nice. Good trade up, I think, for the Pacers overall and would really fit the team. Trade number two. Now, this trade is um, a trade that honestly could happen. Maybe um, uh, Warriors uh, don't give as much. Maybe the Warriors give a little more. I don't really know. How do you feel about Jonathan Kaminga? Jonathan Kaminga, though, is probably somebody that could potentially be a star. He's only, like, 20 years old. He is almost like a rookie already. He's he's old as some rookies, too, in this draft. Um, athletic and scored amazing when it came to the playoffs uh, two seasons ago. Last season, there were some inner things that didn't really make him uh, minutes uh, get minutes in the playoffs. Much teams, uh, like for the Warriors, uh, leaned on their veterans rather than rookies and kind of split the organization in two ways where the Warriors have been trying to compete and um, trying to get older players and get younger players at the same time. And it doesn't really work. So why not? Um, and the Warriors want to trade up. I should say this. Warriors want to trade up. They talk about training Kaminga to come up. Well, Kaminga could probably fit well with the Pacers. Gary Payton is also somebody that I think would fit. Maybe as a two-guard defensively, and you get more draft capital if you're the Pacers. Warriors, you're getting the seventh pick. You want to trade up. You want to trade Kaminga to maybe trade up. Clearly, they have their eye on someone. I think probably Jairus Walker out of everyone because of how he's kind of like a Draymond with better shooting, and he's very much that Swiss Army Knife guy that works very, very well for the Warriors. Um... That, maybe it's a Taylor Hendricks, defensively very good, three-point shots very good. It's kind of that Warriors 3 and D player that would fit well. 
Maybe it's someone else. But at seven, you could really see maybe a Kaminga trade some first round picks, maybe um, some younger players. Maybe this is Jonathan Kaminga and Mo Moses Moody for the seventh pick. That's like trading your seventh and 14th other uh, um, in 2021, I want to say. 2021, yes. Um, crazy to say that, but it would be just like that. So. Is it worth it for the Warriors? If they want to trade up, they would. If I'm the Pacers, I take this deal if I were them. We'll have to see. But on to the stars of this uh, trade. And we're going to start off with a Kyle Kuzma trade. Someone that, um, with the Wizards potentially doing a rebuild, I think them trying to trade for uh, some assets would be nice. Kyle Kuzma looks like he is going to decline his player option. I don't blame him. He's making 13 mil a year. Someone that I think could definitely be making some more money if he declines it. For this trade, he's of course only getting a four year 25 mil, but someone that can get even more potentially. Chris Duarte is someone that the Wizards probably um, wouldn't really want, but it is someone that still has some potential. Older rookie came out of Oregon, um, showed some promise, but then again, older rookie. Then the team kind of didn't really rely on Chris Duarte. They kind of just let him sit back. He had an injury that really didn't help him too. But you're training for Kyle Kuzma, who is a star in this league. Um, and all you're training is Chris Duarte, the seventh pick and the 29th pick. Wizards, eighth and seventh pick. You can move up in the draft if you want. Get someone that you like better. Get maybe two young guys that are very well. I think eight and seven could definitely be a good uh, place for you. That is a, probably a point guard and a forward, which would be perfect. Maybe you also try and go center if you don't trust Daniel Gafford. Um, 29th pick is not really anything big, but it is still draft capitals and young players that could really help you for if you're the Wizards. Um, and I think this is worth it for both sides. Pacers get that star player that they want with Halliburton. Uh, with Matherin, Miles Turner, whoever it might be, um, and Wizards, you get some more draft capital. Trade number four, and it would be very interesting to see if OG Anobi goes to a Eastern Conference team, but it is OG Anobi for Buddy Heald, which I think is, he should be on the move here soon. Maybe the Raptors still try to compete with this. Chris Duarte, you move up to seventh, and you get another first in the 26th pick. Pacers, you move back to 13 and you get OG Anobi. What the 13th pick it involved, I don't know. But off the bat, maybe take off the 26th and the 13th pick. Maybe it becomes better for you. Um, I don't know if I do that if I'm the Raptors, though. We'll see. Um, but the Raptors, you get this. You get to move up a little more. This is somebody that I think would fit better with your team. Maybe, again, better point guard. Anthony Black on the board. This is... This is Raptors are a team with especially Fred Van Vliet declining his player option. Point guard should be a big, big missing piece that they need to go for. And if you're trying to go young and trying to develop a player, or if you're trying to go win now, I think Anthony Black fits perfectly into that. OG Anobi for the Pacers would probably be one of the better fits out of all. You'll see my next trade why it also fits too. Pacers getting a 3 and D player that can shoot the ball well, that just has somebody that if somebody throws him the rock, catch and shoot perfectly. OG Anobi can do that. Halburn can fit very well with an OG Anobi. Defensively, the Pacers would be very good with Miles Turner also in the center position. 13th pick, you can still get someone very good if you're the Pacers. Maybe this is um, off the top of my head. I'm trying to think who fits perfectly with them. If OG Anobi, maybe a power forward. I don't know if Hawkins would be uh, that well. Oh, Leonard Miller. Maybe a Leonard Miller for the Pacers would be really good. Um, maybe Balakul Bali is still there, and OG Anobi and Balakul Bali are your your wings, which is crazy to say, um, but it could be that. Um, it would be very interesting to see if we see an OG Anobi trade get dealt. If we see a trade for the draft night, I think by close to draft night, there's going to be some crazy trades that just happen. Um, but we'll have to see. Trade number five, and this is the trade that I don't think is going to happen, but we'll have to see. Mikel Bridges. Someone that got offered four first-round picks for him at the trade deadline, they declined. Well, now you're getting a lot more, but I think you're, it's worth it for you, especially if you're the Pacers. Nets, this is going to be the start of your rebuild, and um, I don't know. I've always been a person that's been saying the Nets rebuild is coming, but I don't know anymore because their pick situation isn't the best. There's somebody that um, with all the veterans... You would have to trade almost everyone, it feels like, to be a um, uh, tanking team. 
Andrew Nemhard, Chris Duarte, the seventh pick, the 29th pick, 2025 first. All really, really good, except for maybe Duarte. Nemhard could be somebody that you could try and build around, especially point guard position wise, where he shows some strides, but he is an older rookie, so we'll have to see. Um, seventh pick if you're the Nets, you would really like 29th pick, 2025 20, unprotected first. Interesting. Do I think it's going to happen? I don't think so. Mikel Bridges is definitely somebody I think the Nets are going to try to build around where he might not be the first star for them in a couple years. Maybe he's the second star, but he still is one of their stars they build around. Um, but we'll see what the Pacers can do. Looking at this video, Jalen Brown wasn't also an option, but I don't think a Jalen Brown trade is going to happen. But the Pacers, um, to try and trade for a wing, it's going to be very, very difficult for them, I think, because there's just wing is such a desperate position needed, and there's not really a, team, a lot of teams that are willing to trade a star wing. So we'll have to see. But other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, let me know in the comments what you think. I think some of these trades are very much a uh, we'll have to see type deal, um, but it will be interesting to see what happens. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope you have a good day. Goodbye.